which we have to pay to our drug dealers and others who are supplying. So that time I came across a set of books. It's a, uh, it's a centenary book, 1866 to 1966, about Scudder Memorial Hospital. It's like a souvenir, which, which was half eaten by white ants. <laughs> okay, and it was to be scrapped. I said, no, hold it. So, I, of course, we need money, but that seal that I took, and when I read it, only then I knew the real uh, sacrifice what Reverend Don, Dr. John Scudder had done. It was in 1890 to leave America and to come to India. I don't know whether he would reach in first place. And his father telling him, you would be disinherited if you go ahead of this. And you will be forgotten. And see, I don't remember beyond my grandfather. I know my father, I know my grandfather. But today, seven generations ahead of them, thank you. Uh, celebrating reunion of the Kala family. So he was not forgotten. And his work that he has done, it really transformed the place. So when I read how he landed and he lost his first child, Amy, two year old, and then he lost another child and a third child. And you see his response, I have the book. It is really, I mean, it would bring tears to anybody's eyes. So I was not married in 2010. It's then I just come to know John Scott. I'm already at SMH. And then I decide when I get married and when I get children, I'm going to name them after the Scudders. And, <laughs> and then I meet my wife. And uh, I mean, she came in to work at SMH at the times no doctor wanted to join because you pay less. And the hospital is old. There's no good accommodation. The quarters are leaking. There's rain into the house. And uh, but I saw that she came in and she was a person who really didn't complain because I was in, in charge of many things at the hospital and all the staff, doctor, the house is leaking. Snake is entering my house. Scorpions are coming. I tell them, see, snake is entering my house also. It is leaking. But she never complained. And I was really fascinated that I realized that she was a, I mean, a woman of God and but then we got married and she also had the same fascination for scudders and so it was easy to name our children after the scudders so that's how it comes mm -hmm. and yeah you can see more stuff so you all many of you would have seen this but this is the uh, remains of the mm -hmm. of the John Scudder and Harriet Scudder mm -hmm. which was originally at Cape Town and then Shrek and I and it was at Rani Fetch. Yeah. Next slide, sir. So it was the sacrifice and faith of John Scudder. It could not come, nothing great comes without sacrifice. And somebody has to die. A seed has to be thrown. So that yeah. is a huge blessing. He gave up his exactly. life and his heritage of so many generations and thousands of years, thousand years of service by the Scudders has transformed and blessed our country. And I believe not just blessing to our country, this is my belief, I don't know, that all of you are, as Scudders, as descendants of Reverend Dr. John Scudder and the Scudders, have been blessed, but owing, I mean, I believe God blesses the generations of missionaries because I myself, my parents were missionaries. My father was from a non-Christian background. He came to know the Lord in a very amazing way. I'm very grateful to God for that. And uh, he was excommunicated from his family because in, the, in our part of the country, it was considered that if you become a Christian, it's only the poor who go to Christian because they want some money. So it was like something like that. So he was sent out. Uh, but today we are also blessed. And I don't count blessing just in terms of money, but what God has done in our lives. And I think it is also because of what my parents have done. And the same way, the work of the scudders has been a blessing to all of you, I believe. So just quickly, we have forgotten Reverend John Scudder and we have also forgotten Reverend Silas Scudder. I mean, the stories are really heartrending when I read those books and how, as a doctor, he was asked to leave his practice and come to India. And then he finds there's no fund because of war. And for a doctor not to practice is a big punishment. Okay, if you, as a surgeon, if I, if the theater is closed and say one week you cannot operate, we get very irritated. <laughs> so, and for four years to be there, and then there's a lot of struggling to start, and then patients keep pouring in, the workload is so much, he falls sick. It's really 
terrible what they have I mean what they have undergone but it has really transformed our place and this was the original hospital building like this. and uh, just I mean uh, I've taken off some slides but of course I this was in the book which was there I think it's in many other books as well this is how the Scudder, uh, Scudder Memorial Association was formed the purpose to erect a Rani Pedge, uh, to perpetuate the missionary work begun by Reverend Dr. John Scudder and his descendants. Yeah, next slide. So in 1919, the foundation stone was laid for a new building. 1866, our hospital was started, but the current building, which was uh, foundation stone laid in 1919 and completed by 1928. Next slide, sir. Mm -hmm. So in those days, it was called like the Taj Mahal of South India, which was um, uh, written in the uh, book, uh, which Dorothy Scudder had written. It was very beautiful. And in fact, the architect, which we, the original Scudders, I mean, the Scudders before we actually came in the was very beautiful. The corridors were warm. It was patient friendly. Even if you look at CMC, the old building or the big bungalow where Ida Scudder lived, there was a lot of value to beauty, even though it was the country was poor and but because our God is a God of beauty is a great and mighty God. So we need I mean, I feel now I didn't know all these things. So I think we need to get back to the original vision of Scudders. Apart from service, they also had a heart for beauty, architecture and whatever you call it. Next. OK, so this was going on. The hospital was doing well even after the foreign. I mean, the Americans left. And Indian Sukhoi is still doing well, but after 1996, due to various reasons, and uh, I mean, it started coming down. In 2010, there was no way to run the hospital. And in fact, we were just four doctors. You can go to the next slide, no? Yes. So it was Dr. Andu Suresh and myself and two junior doctors were already planning to leave. And uh, it was almost an impossible situation. And even we thought it could not run. And uh, this was our deficit. And, no patients, no doctors. The building would like like one ghost haunted building, and people would say it that way. Uh, this thing. Next slide. And then in 2010, so Dr. Suresh was initially very reluctant to take charge because of a lot of factors around. Though he was committed, he had already worked from 2000, 2000 to 2010 there, and I was I just joined in 2008, and uh, but. After a lot of thought and a lot of this thing, he agreed to take up. And uh, it was impossible. Everybody around said, it is not going to work. This hospital, you cannot run it. It is going to fail. And even I thought so. I was, And uh, he had a job outside. And I was also making my moves outside. Then we said, okay, let's give it a try. And we prayed and we took it up. It is not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. It is truly amazing. I, next slide, please. So... Again, like Dr. John Scudder, this was a man of great sacrifice and faith. And I was fortunate to be part of this team. And I didn't have the faith to believe where we are, that we could be at this place, at uh, where SMH is right now. It is impossible for anybody to imagine. But now I'm still starting to believe that nothing is impossible. So only such people with great sacrifice and great faith, whether Dr. John Scudder or Dr. Silas Scudder or Dr. Ida Scudder, or whoever, only then we get great things beyond what we can achieve as humans. Yeah. So we did, we wanted to continue the healing ministry of Jesus Christ by providing quality, accessible, and affordable healthcare to all. Because SMH, we are easily accessible, we are affordable, and we are also striving to improve the quality, though we are a small hospital. Yeah. So what we thought, I being in SMH for two years didn't know about John Scudder. So we thought every year we were going to, from 2010 when we took uh, responsibility along with Dr. Suresh, we thought we are going to celebrate September 3rd as the hospital day in memory of Reverend Dr. John Scudder. So this is to emphasize the sacrificial effort of the pioneering Scudders, what they did to our community. And also this is the time we involved the local people, we called the politicians and others to come and join us in the celebration so they know about our hospital. And we try to do some inaugurations or something, new facilities opening. So we try to make ourselves more visible. And also, very importantly, we want to make it like a Thanksgiving time every year for taking us through to one more year. Thank you. So this was how it was in 2010. The whole hospital was in real shambles. Yeah, next. So today, by God's grace, we have come to this. Next slide, sir. You can move up. 
Yes, sir. next you can go up, sir. You can. So a lot of periods we have to take one by one. The wards were all really broken down. Next slide, sir. So every year we try to do something. First, we did a Dr. John cut a dialysis unit in uh, 3rd September. It does free dialysis for patients through a government scheme. The government pays very little, but we thought this is a way through which we can reach out to the community. Though this doesn't benefit financially, but it benefits, benefits in our institution financially, it benefits the patients a lot. And then we opened the, another wing because the dialysis beds were getting full. We made the Harriet's Harry sort of dialysis wing. So we kept on, we had a new CT scan inaugurated. Next slide, sir. And uh, this was another, I thought of not putting it, but then as uh, Mr. Jackson has said that I should put it in. This was, uh, uh, this was the place which we transformed to an IC. We didn't, uh, I mean, in 2012, 11, we got married and 12, she was pregnant with our first child. And Dr. J.P. Srinivasan, who was a gynecologist in Connecticut for almost 40 years, she just retired a few years back. So she, uh, she is her grandmother. So she just came to India and she wanted to see because she's pregnant and how she's doing. And she came down to our house. It was a very like the whole hospital. The house was so old. It was leaking from top. And it used to seep you from when, when it's rainy, the floor, you can have water seeping from the room. And she, I remember she had kept or her saris in a cupboard, okay, and then one fine day we see that it's all damp with a lot of fungus and all that. <laughs> so she came and, but that was it. That was, but we were living a very happy life. We were just married, she was pregnant, and we were enjoying the birth. And because both of us were like-minded, then she came in and she saw, and uh, she just came, just 10 minutes, she saw the hospital, and then she was moving to CMC Vellow because she's an alumni of CMC Vellow. And then she went home and uh, next day she told, told the family, you know, the children are really suffering there. And next day, all relatives from Chennai come with a lot of meat and rice and all those things to <laughs> take care of her. And the other next day I get a call saying, Sam, I'm sending some money for um, this thing. She said some 100,000. I didn't understand the 100,000 is American language. We use a different way of 10,000 and lakh and all that. So... Till 2011, we were out of touch with the scudders because of various reasons, the scudders were stopped funding and for the right reasons because it was not doing well. And um, then through the Velo Foundation, she had wrote with the money that time. Uh, so that we would be able to transform the ICU, paint the whole hospital and do a lot of things in uh, 2012 and 13, which gave a major facelift to the institution at that point of time. Yes, next slide, please. I'm not having, I couldn't get a photo, but anyway, next slide. This is the Dr. Jane Padrini Srinivasan. He didn't want her name there, but my director said, no, no, it has to be there. So we put it up. So one thing which I, uh, when I entered SMH in 2008, there was in the doctor's room, a small white paper stuff like this, saying people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I could, another reason I, married her was that she was not a specialist in that since she was a general physician, a family physician. Uh, but most of the patients would want to see her because she had the empathy for the patients. And I know that, I mean, we didn't have great specialists at Rani Peps, but we had a lot of trust that our patients could put in us, even though with whatever, not so specialized, but reasonable good service that we could offer. Thank you, ma'am. So a lot of renovations. Next slide, please. And in 2013, finally, the scudders arrived. So we had a scudder association members, uh, Dr. Rockfish and I, Dr. Dave Taylor and many others had come. So that was the first time we, we got in touch with the scudder mm -hmm. association. And slowly then they started, you, you people started helping us through different ways. Next slide. So we started doing small uh, changes to the ward, to the funds that came in. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we got to the Reformed Church of America. We were able to do our accident emergency uh, system because she would remember when we were there, we, the a and &E accident emergency room was just this small. And we would do everything from treating a heart attack to a patient who is has to be intubated. We would do everything in that small, dirty room. It was really hard. So finally, we got funds and we were able to do a big a &E because we lie at the a and E's accident emergency department. 
we like the intersection of highways and you would have seen those who come to India, we don't wear helmets. Uh, why we take <laughs> so there are a lot of accidents and alcohol and a lot of things. So we were able to reach out to the community through this. And we did the Operation Theater extensive next month. So funds started coming in, Dr. Rockfish helped with the Operation Theater. Um, next, next. And we started community dental wings. Next, next. And this was a major, uh, like I was telling about the quarters we lived in. Today we live in a very beautiful quarters, thanks to uh, Dr. James Taylor and Susan Taylor through the Scutter Organization. And this again, we were able to get many doctors staying in. See, today we have 55 doctors staying in the campus. We were just two, three, four in 2010. And even if there was somebody who was committed for the cause of mission, when you have a family, you have children and all, you want to give them a recent living place. And this has been a very big help to us. And the start of surgical suit, we also started private work because slowly patients who could afford started coming in. So we were treating the poor on one side. We also did the next slide. So this was a palliative care center funded by another Indian who gave a 35 lakh Indian, three and a half million Indian rupees. And we were able to start this. And then we were getting another help through Jack Scudder for the, during COVID-19. We were only hospital, apart from CMC, started doing, taking COVID patients. All nursing hospitals, all private institutions didn't want to take COVID at that time. So we went and started testing, admitting. It made a big uh, impact on the community at that time that we were able to reach out to the community. Next. And then we got an oxygen plant. We all started getting from Indian companies who give some donations. So through Tata, I don't know if you've heard of Tata Sons, yeah. so they gave. Then again, Scatter Association gave us the uh, digital mission. Yeah. Next. Okay. And uh, we also had Jack Spiller visiting us in uh, last year. Next slide. Yeah. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then this, some pictures, the uh, chronology is jumbled up. We had, uh, this was during when uh, Dr. Dave Saylor and uh, uh, Mr. Charles Kerr as president and the board members came during 2019. Next slide, please. So you could identify some of you here. Yeah. We had a cake cutting on that day on uh, on stage during the function with, uh, yeah, next slide. And then we also uh, got a the sewage treatment plant, which is almost hundred thousand USD. The government was not willing to give us accreditation without which you'll have to close. So now all the uh, waste was going into open sums, which was not acceptable by the government. So we didn't have the money. It was almost hundred thousand USD, and uh, through a rotary grant, we were able to uh, raise the money to Dr. Rob Fish, who connected, and he gave most of the money. But the rotary also matches. The, some of the funds we give, and so we were able to make it bigger. And this is uh, it was a fantastic feeling that uh, uh, in 2019 when you were all there, and I would, it was a great encouragement for all of us to have you all come. And I want you all to come often like this and encourage us and also bless us in the So now the thing is. We have to cross over into the next phase. 1911 is current formed. 1919, the cornerstone is laid for the new building. 1928, the new building is completed. So 2019, you all come in. So second century, second century is gone. So now we are in the third century of since Reverend Dr. Transfer. And next slide, please. So things are slightly, we'll have to see how we can get things better. Next slide. So we did a lot of renovation for the accreditation. We did painting, we did plastering, but uh, the building is not holding up in many ways. And you could see that the floor, next slide please. The floor had, uh, ceiling had broken through the fall ceiling and the ceiling. So this was actually where the patients, we do the dressing on the patients. <laughs> there was no patient at that time. So, so and uh, not just this, and many places there's a lot of seepage. No, we are doing our best. We will continue the way, but I think it is time that we move into the next phase into the new building because we have to keep this legacy of the scudders alive and we need to cross over into the next phase. Right? Yeah. So this is like I crossing over, you all know about Joshua and this is where it's crossing over the River Jordan. 
So they didn't have the Jordan River parted and then they went in. The priests first placed their feet on the river and then the waters part, parted. So you need to have faith to move on. You can't just wait for things to happen and then move on. Yes. And that's a faith. And so you can just quickly go through this slide. I think I'm taking okay. time. So we are planning a bicentenary building, hospital building in, uh, I mean, Reverend Dr. John's building. So flow by flow, we thought we would go. Pediatric and surgical ward and MI. So you can just keep going. I think we're running out of time. So, <laughs> yeah. So, something like we want, like a White House of running bed. Nothing is important. What in SMH today I thought was impossible in 2010. Even though I had the heart to be there, I didn't have the faith. I should tell you frankly. But one step at a time, God took us through. And this would happen. We know you're all there to support and we can connect and God will make it happen in his own time. Yeah. Okay, so this is our big plan. So I know it's way beyond our heads, but nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. Definitely. So there are a lot of things you can just rush through it. We're planning for a blood bank also. Currently, CMC is giving us a blood bank. You have a storage unit, but now our surgical work is increasing. So they're also finding it difficult to supply us. So we are thinking that we should have a blood storage, a blood bank itself, so we can bleed the patients and take blood out of them. So another thing is a lot of things, solar energy, because we could save a lot of money if we have solar. We have a lot of land, you all know that. So if we set up solar energy, we'll be rating, uh, we'll be saving millions of rupees every year in terms of electricity. So oh yeah, next slide, Okay. So okay, no, okay, can go back. I think something. So another thing is, it is something close to my heart. I'm looking at a Scudder Craniofacial Foundation. Uh, this is, it will happen in its time. And because I am very grateful to the Scudder Association and uh, that time I had written to Dr. Rockfish and the members and the board had unanimously supported my training into maxillofacial surgery. And then I later did my craniofacial fellowship and I'm just back to Ranipet last month. I finished my second training I was saying. And we are already operating people with maxillofacial trauma and now cleft lip and palate uh, children born with congenital anomalies. And we are doing we a little bit free through some help with some friends or uh, this thing. So now I'm thinking of next slide. So I mean this is just some of the work that we do. See this is an adult patient who's not uh, and she's almost 30 plus not operated for palate and lip lack of funds and lack of access to resources and lack of awareness and all that. So we are trying to break through all those barriers. And we also do a lot of, so this patient had a severe sleep apnea because the jaw was small. We did jaw surgeries to bring it forward just to show what we do. And yeah, next, next. Time. And there are other patients which are in line next next month or so, we'll have to do some surgery. Next slide. Just putting it across for your, what we do. Yeah, next slide. So I'm really uh, thankful to for the training, I mean, for the opportunity and the support that you have given for my training, because I it has really transformed me. It, our department, we just had one dentist, and today we have seven doctors with four dental surgeons and three maxillofacial surgeons, and we do a lot of uh, work in trauma, benign pathologies, like uh, assistant tumors of the jaws, and we do a lot of facial trauma, patients with broken faces with accidents. And we also do some facial aesthetic surgeries. And this is my professor who uh, was very happy to train me. He said, you have to go back and build a 100-bed facial center in, in your hospitals. He's a Christian, but he works in a private hospital, makes a lot of money. <laughs> so he said, I'll give you one lakh rupees. This is seed money. It's 100,000 rupees. So you start it in Spain and I will support you. And... And so the things started opening up. So I was just treating a patient in Bangalore where I was working. And uh, he came up and he gave me another 5 million rupees to build a new operation theater because our work is a lot with neurosurgeons, craniofacial surgery, so which is compatible with neurosurgery and all that. So that build, construction is going on now. When I go back, it will be almost done uh, for that. System. Yeah, next slide. So this investment has had a very cascading effect. I'm also very thankful for supporting John, Dr. Andrew Suresh's son, who's doing his medicine, because I know he's going to come back to SMH. In CMC, the good thing is that you'll see the Chandis and Dr. Fulimut, they've come back for three, four generations. Their father 
in SMH, you look at the former medical school, nobody has, no, no, none of these children are in SMH. They're all abroad, they're in US, they're in other places, and they are in CMC and elsewhere. So we want to make sure that, no, not everybody would come back. So I came back to the training. Now I know that John would come back. We need, and probably I don't know what my children are going to do, but it would be my desire that, no, I named them after the scudders and I told them the story because they need to understand the calling of John Scudder and I want them to follow in the same footsteps of that. So, and also I was reading about the, how Ida Scudder in 1895, the women's board had funded her medical uh, training and how she has impacted in terms of CMC Valor and everything around. Yeah, thanks. Um, and so this was, the, this, see, too many things into your head, but nothing is impossible in the future, even a medical college, because our children will study and come back to our place, like in CMC Valor. Yeah. So one step at a time, the book, which uh, Rina Rachel and uh, written about, I love that book. And in its time, God will make all things beautiful. So we also have a large plan about having a clean and green SMH. Yeah, next slide. And we also want to become a satellite mission center where we help other mission hospitals. So we are, next slide, sir. We are also running uh, some of our smaller mission centers around, which was also started by the missionaries uh, or the Scudder families and also other family, other mission hospitals. I also go to Nagaland, which is the north of India, and we do some free surgery for cleft and other anomalies. This is another thing, a scudder, I think it's going beyond. So I also, because I want the scudder heritage to percolate through all the staff of SMH and also the community of SMH. I mean, community of Rani Pets to know what they have done and how we have been able to do it, because that will have a transforming effect on the hospital through various indirect means. I'm sure of that. So to keep the fire burning, the smart spark may have been a small pamphlet, the three knobs, but we need to get the logs in the wood every day to keep it burning. And Dr. John Scudder in that same book once about time, how it's important to influence our children and the dissonance because John Scudder didn't leave any big dispensary or a big hospital or this thing, but his dissonance and the generations have impacted India in a genetic manner. Yeah. So a lot of difficulties, challenges, but we know that all things work together for good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Next slide. And this is what I learned from my director. Strong faith attracts divine attention. Strong faith sees the invisible. You can't see the medical college. You can't see the new building, but we will have it. And strong faith silence negative report. Yeah. Thank you all. And yeah.